Ignite from dreams to reality. My name is uh, Oluwa Sheik, uh, Jibril Anopoli. Um, yes, really. how many square meters are we dealing with? I studied economics. Now, just before I left school, I met a distant cousin. He used to do a lot of furniture from Italy and stuff like that. And, and I thought that was so fascinating, you know, just selling a whole lot of amazing pieces that could just change the whole setting of your house. And, and then I spoke to him and I said, hey, how possible would, would, can we, can I work with you? And, and he, he gave me a go ahead. He said, hey, why don't you can market for me? And um, I thought it was good. In the process of marketing, I met a guy, a client. That was my first client in my entire life. And he said he wanted to do par uh, parquet, which was wood floor, which is what I do now. And I never heard that word before, parquet. So I asked my, uh, my cousin, and then he said, oh, parquet, oh yeah, we do it, wood flooring. And I said, wood flooring? Who's gonna do wood flooring in Nigeria? And he said, oh, you wait and see. I had to do a whole lot of research because having to do the floors and making sure that whatever that person is spending is good. You need to sell that market all the way. And I used to walk around the streets of VI, Lagos and Lekki. I used to literally walk. I just keep walking and talking to people, you know, and um, eventually we started making flyers. Once I see a structure, I could be driving, I'm going to, you know, turn around, go back, talk to anybody. Sometimes it's the gate man. I put in my flyer profile in an envelope, seal it, address it to whoever I think is in charge. And I wanted a situation where when people walk into a building, you, you cannot but help to say, what is this? Fantastic. But yeah, that's pretty much how we spread the word about wood flooring. Logistics are so very difficult. I wake up in the morning, I'm planning out my time. Some of my staff don't show up. Eventually when they show up, it's late, traffic. You can't always have that perfect journey. Nigeria is not as predictable as we all think it is. Things change every time. So, you know, it's like as if you're asleep, but you're never asleep. Every time you go to bed at night, you think you're asleep, but you're really never asleep because there's always a new thing to wake up to the next morning. Ignite from dreams to reality. I'm still on hiring and firing. Okay. Ma, now. Should I call the CEOs for you? <laughs> now, like uh, the short play we, we watch here. The third CEO sacked the Employee. relation officer also. But when she was about sacking him, she said something. She said she has warned him the first time, the second time, over a mistake that has been reoccurring. Now, in a case whereby somebody made a mistake and you've never talked to him about him, about it rather, you just sucked him. Are you really? Do you really do that? Are you really doing that, that person a favor, or you're sending a mistake to a labor market for somebody to also employ a mistake? Thank you. Well, let's put it this way: if you make a mistake that costs you a job, you're unlikely to make it a second time which is also why it can be foolishness in quotes for an employer never to give people a second chance. Because the person who has made a very expensive mistake will probably be the most careful person concerning that kind of mistake. I'll tell you the story of uh, a major manufacturing factory in America. They had bought this very expensive uh, production line and they took the guy they thought was their smartest guy and trained him for operating that machine. And it comes down to pressing one button or the other in a certain situation. And at the first roll of the machine, this guy, this smart guy that was trained for it, pressed the wrong button. 
And by pressing the wrong button, it shut down a very expensive machine. It was a very, very expensive mistake. But the chairman of the company said that they shouldn't fire him. He said, because if there's one guy that will most likely never press that wrong button again, he'll be that guy. So if you fire him, you have invested in him for another. And you're about to start the process of a possible mistake all over again. If you remember when uh, Ocha and I were talking to them, we talked to the CEO about even having written the warning. Because it's important, see, for your companies, uh, no matter how small you think they are, you can have, how do you say it? What the worker's handbook, and it doesn't have to be a handbook, can be simple conditions of service written by you, okay? To say, in this place, for you to be fired, if you do this and this and this and this, you'll get a warning. If you get a second warning, by the time you get a third warning, you'll be fired. Conditions where you can be fired instantly. If you steal, if you kill, if you sleep with my wife, whatever. You, you understand what I mean? Make a list of the things. We think these things are not important. But the things you have not thought about in advance become your problem later. And whilst you might think these things exist only in large companies, nobody is telling you to go and print a manual like Shell. Even if your own is a one-pager, think about the possible conditions Scenarios you might find yourself in where your own employees are. Do you understand? And put it down. And when your one staff is starting the first job, let him read through your terms. Because what you have not defined, you cannot accuse of. Do you understand what I'm saying? So always try to cover your tracks. Write the regulations, write the rules, and as much as you can, give people a second chance. Ignite from dreams to reality. What do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank. Truly the first. Ignite. From dreams to reality. The question I want to ask is this. If you are going into a business that has to do with production, let's say for instance, like mine, maybe I want to establish a paper mill in Nigeria, okay. which I know nobody has done it presently. And the means to get to that place is, it's not, I can't just stand tomorrow and say, I'm going into paper, paper mill, mill production. I have to get a means, whereby maybe I have to be in the line of printing business. Now, if I'm starting my business, am I going to go to um, where I'm going to register for the VAT or what is it called? For five years um, holiday, tax holiday, or will I just register based on what I want to do at the present? That's my question. So, it's, um, you know, when you register a company, in your articles and memo, you'd have stated all possible businesses. But what you can claim a tax holiday on is what you do at present. You can't claim a tax holiday on your future plan because that business is not operational. Your existing business might be operational doing another type of business. If you start as a printer and you want to go into paper mill later, and printing doesn't qualify for paper mill, but doesn't qualify for tax holiday, what paper mill does. When you get to paper mill uh, factory setup, 
then you'll ask for a tax holiday. Uh, my question is um, concerning the price strategies. Is what? Concerning the price strategies. Okay, pricing that, strategies. Yes, pricing strategies. And I have like a few questions, three about three questions. One is, um, should we always charge um, 10%, that percent overall company charge for each job we do, or should we always charge um, for each product? Because the way we charge as a brand strategy and consequent companies, we charge for the strategy. Yeah? We also charge for the content building. Because when we charge for the strategy, you need to build the strategy. So we charge for the content building. Then if the content needs production in one way or the other, we're not charged for the production. Okay, you're doing this, you're doing this. This needs to be, put, to be produced, so we charge. Now, sometimes should we, what, what, what advice will you give me? Should you always charge overall 10% or overall 33% or overall 50% on everything? Or should we charge on each, each product or which services we give? That's, that's number one. Okay. Okay, number, number two is, um, you were telling something about expenses, something being expensive yesterday, uh, concerning price. Um, now what a difference when some, something is expensive as against the quality of something and the creativity. Because if we are charging you for a service and you are saying that service is expensive, but we are looking at the quality and the creativity that, that goes into that service. That's, that's number two. Then the last one is, um, what do you do when a fellow competitor um, brings down a price which is actually against the standard of, of the price? If a computer knows that we are good, and he knows that the only way that he can get out of the market is to bring down the price. But in, we know that the price, what we are doing is, um, we have like a, 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 I, I call it PC, production cost. If the price that is bringing down is below the production cost, we, we, we will be losing. Yeah. You understand? So what can we do? What, what do we do in that, in that, in that situation? Okay. Uh, let me start with your last question. You know, when a competitor does what you've just described, he wants to drag you into a price war. Now, every time there's a price war, the only benefactor is the client. The loser is you. Even though the client who is discerning can also lose. Because sometimes a client who gets into a price war is desperate one way or the other, and they could get the job and run into trouble with it because they, don't, they haven't charged adequately for the job. So they're going to have to fund part of the job with some of their money. That's if they've gone below cost. But it's up to you and what your goals are. But never be pressured to make a loss because it doesn't make sense. Except if you have the capacity to fight a price war. If you know you're a small business and to get into that game with them you will lose, Stay with your integrity where that transaction is concerned. Explain to the client the value that you bring to the table and explain to them that this price is below cost. We know what we can deliver, but we can't do it at that price, unfortunately. For us to do that is to work at a loss. Some clients will think, well, that's your problem. I just want to pay the least price, and they'll go with the other guy. But you must have the courage sometimes to lose a job. That's the honest truth. There's sometimes that you're better off losing at that moment. You see, they say, he that walks away today, what? He lives to fight another day. It's better to do that than to be foolish enough to go and lose money if you can't afford to. You understand? Now, but make sure that you don't just disappear. You establish the point and the reason why you can't compete at that price to the client. Why is that important? When something happens later that proves what you said, you will gain 10,000 miles credibility with that client than your competitor. When they come back to you, they will never argue with you about your price again because a situation would have proven to, you, to them that you know what you're talking about. Don't get into a price war. When it gets to a price war and you know you can't afford to do it, go and make, leave statements of facts about why you can't do it, but walk away from it. It can be tough, it can be rough, 
But desperate actions always cost you sometimes. Now, in terms of pricing, you, you do not necessarily have to have the same price formula for every type of service. Because some have different components that are different from the other. So if you say our margin will always be 30%, you could spend more hours developing the strategy as opposed to the content. The content could require more expensive manpower to, to develop and all of those variables. You are the one that knows the composition of your pricing. But like I said to you, it's the principles that are important. The rule of fairness and the rule of do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Just make sure and your integrity, your price reflects your integrity and your character in many ways. Once you've determined what the price is, be sure you can defend it and be sure that you have the peace of mind knowing you've been fair to your customer. Because remember, every gap between what it can be and what it is is an advantage you have left for who? For competition. So it's not about whether I'm selling at 200,000 Naira, but I'm selling at 100,000 Naira. It's about, is my 200,000 a fair price? Or is my 100,000 a fair price? Relative, because you talked about being expensive. Expensive is different for different folks. It depends on what the expectations are and what they want. Ignite from dreams to reality. Well, it's been a tough day. Talking about giving good news to people as you hire them and talking about how you do sometimes have to let people go. We've come to the end of today's show. As you grow your business, remember that successful entrepreneurs hire people who are smarter than them sometimes, or just as smart as they are. So you've get, got to learn how to handle them. They also take time to better understand and manage their people so they can identify the talents and take this decisive action when it's necessary to weed out the misfits. The growth of your business will depend to a large extent on your ability to bring out the best from your people. Just as you invest in your business, you must also invest in the people that help you to run your business. Until next week, this is Ignite. Keep the fire burning. Send in your comments, questions, and shout-outs to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ignite TV, Twitter slash Ignite TV NG, and check out our website, www.ignite-tv.com 